Hello everybody and welcome to Promise Gaming with more Plague Inc. Evolved! Custom scenarios. I have been forwarded a scenario by a viewer that looks very, very interesting to me. It is called Ghost Ship. Apparently there are no planes. This is supposed to be in the 18th century after the fall of the Spanish Empire and it is somewhat Lovecraftian in nature? Which color me intrigued, I just gotta give this one a shot. So where did you go? I found you a minute ago, where are you? There it is, already four stars by the author Terror. So sounds pretty good, I mean this seems promising. I'm looking forward to it. In the year 1712, an unknown vessel landed upon a Caribbean coast, controlled by otherworldly forces and no crew in sight. A curious sailor stumbled inside to explore and was subjected to a stealthy phantasm intent on ending this world abound. Take note that dark red and purple traits cannot be devolved, okay? It's designed to be difficult, so the author did warn me it's supposed to be difficult, but it has been rigorously playtested and can be beaten, so that seems perfectly fine. Also, apparently it's a prion, so we have to be very aware of the timing with that. Okay, lots of important stuff here. I probably could read through this if I actually find myself struggling, but let's give it a go and see what happens. Genetic uh, Mimic and Catalytic Switch should be fine for me, given that it is a Prion. I usually find myself getting cured kind of early on, and I like getting the extra gas from Blue Bubbles. Aquasite Extremophile and Transtasis all should be fine. Plega Sanctorum. Interesting. Curious Sailor infected. After his exploration of the ghost ship, an unknowing sailor has contracted this new otherworldly phantasm. Wars rage in the year 1712. All across the world of the 1700s, Empires war with each other, uh, creating vastly different environments than you may be used to. Explore and analyze the time period's people to help annihilate the world. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Because it's so early on, countries like, let's say, the United States doesn't exist. It's the colonies, and it's not wealthy. It's rural. Oh, that makes sense. And by the way, I just realized I can't be correct about this being after the fall of the Spanish Empire because of 1712. Spanish Empire hasn't fallen yet. Or maybe one version of it has, I don't remember anymore. Kingdom of Spain. Population is significantly reduced. Oh, dude, check this out! Look at the customization of all this, this is awesome! Colonial Mexico, Captaincy General of Guatemala, Spanish Colombia, Colonial Brazil, Colonial Peru, Tsardom of Russia, uh-huh. The Oldenburg Realms, the Swedish Empire, Prussia, yes, Prussia. The Crown of Poland, Great Britain, Italy is still Italy, Greenland is still Greenland, Iceland is still Iceland, New Holland down here in Australia. Fascinating. The Great King Imperial China. All right, I like this. I like the amount of extra customization that went into this. This looks freaking awesome. Let's get started in the Caribbean and see what happens. The Caribbean Islands. All right, transmission. We start off with Livestock Trading 1. Phantasm passes easily onto Livestock, a common bartering entity around the world. Increases its infectivity, especially in the rural regions and among the wealthy. Given that we're going to start around the colonies, I have to imagine going for that rural transmission ends up being very, very important for us. We start off poor, rural, uh, humid, and hot. Okay, so anything that helps along those lines will be good for us. We want to go for what? Livestock Trading 2? Uh, Phantasm targets nearby livestock, a common bartering entity we already saw, something like that, uh, more rural, okay. Good amongst the wealthy, apparently. I would have thought that that would be good amongst the poor, personally, but that's just me. Spices! See, this I could see being around the wealthy. Heck, tea! Just, tea would be going for the wealthy, right? Could form a freaking empire around that stuff. Uh, Phantasm disperses spores onto nearby plants and floral trade goods through the ears and the nose, increasing infectivity for boat travel and within humid environments. Now that seems very, very useful for our start in the Caribbean islands. For our symptoms, we have access to spectral visions, inability to sleep, makes people uncomfortable and unproductive, causes hallucinations of unknown ghosts and dead loved ones, typically at home or on the open seas. Because, I mean, you're likely to go mad if out in the open seas, right? Nothing but water as far as you can see, I go a little cuckoo too. Dermis cracking. Breakdown of the epidermis causes large stone-like cracks, which increase chance of a self-infection from any pathogen. Very severe. Okay. For our abilities, we have Arctic hardening, good for the cold. We have personal hygiene, thrive in dirty environments and ships. I don't know what that means as far as like an actual transmission vector, but okay. Night owl, phantasm prefers to interact with others during the night. 
Deconstruction. Alters its DNA, so this is a gene genetic reshuffle. Rapid molecular movement, good for a genetic hardening. And Chinese medicine. Of course, because the Chinese were so stinking advanced back in those days, which is actually true. So many freaking amazing technologies came out of China. It's amazing they didn't become the world hegemon. Superstitious medics seek out strange methods of ancient medicine from the Chinese. They show little to no effect, but provide a boost to spread. Okay, so basically Chinese medicine didn't actually work. Well, <laughs> I was just talking about how amazing the Chinese were and stuff. To be fair, they did have some things that were a little off, apparently. But okay, this is one of them. Don't rely on Eastern medicine, ladies and gentlemen. It'll get you killed. Uh, it's funny. Anyway, ocean cilia. Phantasm adapts to moving about the ocean. Allows bivalves to host the phantasm, increasing infectivity around barnacles and other shellfish. Sounds useful in the Caribbean. This leads to fish trading. Phantasm can temporarily idle within fish brains, allowing passage between humans of trading vessels. Perfect, we'll go for that as well. I'm just trying to speed things up a little bit in the Caribbean over here. I mean, it's pirates of the Caribbean turned into plague form, right? Sort of. But again, vaguely Lovecraftian in nature. Where, where's the other otherworldly stuff going to come in? Are we going to have Cthulhu? Or Nyarlathotep? I don't know. I mean, just because it's somewhat Lovecraftian doesn't mean it actually has to use Lovecraftian's, you know, trademark stuff. Like, it's fine. I don't expect it to necessarily be a Lovecraft scenario. I'm just saying. I'm looking forward to as many otherworldly things as possible. I'm feeling good about this scenario so far. Very good. Aromatic oils. Oh my god, it's early essential oils. Yay! <laughs> Everyone loses all their money. Aromatics made for the elite. Many from aquatic animals are used daily. Increases infectivity in urban, wealthy environments and adds the chance to mutate. Makes sense? Not going to worry about that right now. Shockingly severe. Exotic animal trading. Exotic animals of the ocean and land are traded amongst the elite. Unknown animals from around the world can potentially carry the phantasm unnoticed. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and pick that up um, and see what it does. It is, in fact, a spore burst. Something in me was telling me this might result in a spore burst, and we did just get into mainland Southeast Asia for free. We're also in uh, Colonial Mexico nearby, which is not the best place for a spore burst, but oh well. Rabid Animalia? Phantasm causes violent activity in animals to members of different species. Not going to worry about this right now. Good for animal corpses. I wonder if that is corpse transmission. Huh. Well, let's go for livestock trading level 2. This leads to livestock food supplies. Suppliers of animal feed are infected with the phantasm, increasing distance of infectivity, especially among trade routes and other nearby countries. That sounds like something I would want for water transmission, because, uh, trade routes. So that could be helpful. And then we have animal feces. Phantasm survives hidden within animal feces, significantly increasing infectivity in isolated towns and within humid, hot environments. Perfect for us, and probably good for rural areas as well, just guessing based on what I'm reading over there. Let's go for the livestock food supplies just so we can get onto boats and hopefully travel elsewhere. We got into Madagascar for some reason. Not too sure how that happened. Guessing we got a spore burst and I wasn't planning on it. Guard dogs. Interactions with feces among guard dogs allows Phantasm to move to hard to reach locations such as prisons and royal homes. Alright, probably good for what? Th that may include wealthy places. More spore bursts. Interesting. So if we have to restart this, let's remember that a lot of these transmissions can get you into countries for free. Bloodborne, great game. Phantasm uses host lymphocytes to replicate, increasing infectivity and allows control over certain animal functions, also a high chance for mutation. You know, we haven't had any issues with mutation chance up to this point, but I'll go ahead and pick this up. That was an actual boat that got into the UK, not a spore burst. We did somehow get into Indonesia. They have detected us. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about anything else right now. Uh, do you want more severity? Let's go for the spectral visions. This leads to auditory mirages. Irrational delusions and mental symptoms occur often. Hosts hear into the great beyond, obtaining advice that some may believe unwise and unnatural. I suspect the Jedi would not teach you of these things. Uh, so I'm guessing Great Britain is still considered wealthy, and so is most of Europe at this point, colonial Europe being what it is. Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, but I can't even see what else is going on here. It's a long name! Uh, let's go ahead and pick up the Chinese medicine, just to go ahead and try to increase our spread in wealthy countries. I'm assuming that will still work. Amazingly, we then immediately got into China, so maybe that's how that works. I don't know. Let's go for some Arctic hardening to help us spread a little bit faster in places like Great Britain. We could go for a second level of that, not worried about it right now. Um, what does this do? Night Owl. Interacting with others during the night. I don't know. Thrives in dirty environments and ships. What does that mean? Is that poor transmission? And maybe sea transmission? Maybe. Let's pick it up. 
Leads to personal hygiene level 2, more dirty environments, ships, mud, and stagnant water. Very expensive, I'm afraid. Auditory mirages, good. I was just saying we probably should get some more uh, severity. We do have lucid dreaming. Random blackouts occur often, followed by intense lucid dreaming of a world beyond the touch of reality, a little bit of lethality. And enhanced vision. Changes in the eye architecture allow for long distance vision. Sailors with this mutation are promoted for their usefulness, causes peripheral attention loss. A little bit of lethality, but a pretty good amount of severity and infectivity. Highly tempting. May want to go for the aromatic oils instead, though, since we are now getting into some wealthier countries. What's going on with the Shogunate? Ah, uh, it's just called Japan. Boo, I was kind of hoping it would be called the Shogunate. Let's go for aromatic oils. This leads to Airborne 1. Gives the ability to travel amongst seabird feathers and in evaporated water, increasing infectivity across the world. Sounds kind of useful to me, doesn't it? Let's pick it up. Leads to Airborne Level 2. Phantasm evolves to shed weight, becomes lighter than air components. I thought it was a ghost. Glides easily across long distances on its own. And scavengers. Food supplies are broken into by scavenging animals like raccoons or something, I'm sure. Both spreading infected food and carrying the phantasm to other locations. Is that a spore burst of some sort? Maybe. Are we getting, like, um, passive spore bursting thanks to the airborne now? We might be. Uh, rabbit animalia could be helpful. Ease of curing, I'm not sure I want, though. Let's go for scavengers. This leads to rat infestation. Moving swarms of infected material between cities and towns. I'm guessing very good for the urban areas. Uh, let's go for enhanced vision. Okay, that stops and doesn't go anywhere else. Um, Night Owl. I'm going to go for some more Arctic hardening to increase the spread up in the far north, since we seem to be having a little trouble there. Dermis has been cracking. Okay, so that happened on its own. That leads to internal rearranging. Phantasm sends commands to cells for repurposing. Can cause failures in organ function, leading to internal bleeding or external bleeding, mm, both of which are quite bad. Israel, Jordan, and Syria are leading the global cure effort. Well, I can't allow that now, can I? Uh, let's go for some more airborne. This leads to weather control. Phantasm easily moves between weather conditions, allowing global passage unhindered. Okay. That leads to animal morphology. Oh, remember that dark red things cannot be devolved, so we're getting a lot of severity at this point. We should be careful. Uh, Phantasm mimics animal cells of any encountered species to easily move among their bodies. And when you move your body, you do the move it nice and sweet and sassy. Allows feral control over animal kingdom carriers. Again, a lot more severity, maybe more than I want. But it's kind of hard to avoid the severity at this point. Um, let's go for Night Owl and just see if that does anything. Alcoholic Desire. Phantasms enjoy the stimulation of rum and other alcohol. Good, we're all turning into pirates. Increases productivity of the pathogen while decreasing that of the host, presumably slowing down the cure from unproductive people. Ah, no, stop. All right, remember we're a prion, so we're slow to roll things out. So if we get some lethality, it's not a huge deal. Still, I'm going to go for this. This leads to substance addiction. Phantasm stimulates the uh, desire to take hallucinogenics or other mind-bending substances. Causes breakdown in productivity and increasing of mutations. Sounds good. And then we have en masseur. Phantasm acts as an STI. You know, it used to be called an STD, and we stopped calling it that for some reason. Now it's an STI. I don't know why. And forces the host to seek large groups of love-desiring humans. That is one way to say horny, but okay. Celebrations are a breeding ground for the phantasm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can imagine what that all becomes. That sounds really horrible. All right, y'all need Jesus is all I'm saying. Y'all need Jesus. All right, so we've got all this. Um, I'm still thinking we may want more cold resistance because we're struggling on that front, definitely. And we're getting a lot of severity. We need to be very careful. We may not get into Greenland if we're not cautious. Now, granted, we may... F oh, there go the boats. So we may still find some ways to get spore bursts via various different uh, in transmissions. I'm kind of hoping that that is the case. Because as of right now, there's nothing that's going to get me into Greenland, and I'm very, very concerned about that. So we need to get more transmissions. Uh, let's go for Rabbit Animalia. That leads to Viper Preference. Causing snake bites. Okay. Spreading very quickly in countries like Russia, but we're not... We're running out of gas here. Um, skeletal savaging. What is that? Visions of the void. Daydreaming and sleeping can lead to involuntary visions of the world beyond. Treading too long in this state can cause brain death or insight into cure potential. Fascinating. Skeletal salvaging. Minerals from bone structures are redistributed to the phantasm, causing bodily weakness. Nutrition gouging. Severe theft of caloric intake. And automaton state. Humans interact with an automatic, undead-like state in their daily lives, hard to be productive, presumably slowing down the cure further. 
Um, okay, so we'll go for things that slow down the cure because blue bubbles are going to result in DNA. So as long as we drag this out, I still have some gas. It's just not a lot. The author did say, by the way, sorry about the planes for the blue cure. There's nothing you can do about that. And that's true. I don't blame ya one iota. Mineral distribution paralyzes limb movement. Okay. I mean, if we don't find something that gets me into another country, we're in trouble, though. But I don't have much DNA. So maybe we can eke out a victory here. Maybe. Let's go for animal morphology. This leads to pressure control. Mutations far more likely to occur. And we did get the spore burst. Huzzah! Okay, so now it's about really ramping up that lethality and keeping that cure nice and low. Pressure control will result in mutations, but probably not help me much beyond that. Still, mutations could be useful to me. We have Maddened. A life of dreaming horrors has left the mind insane. People will fall violently flail at others. Sorry, will violently flail at others and refuse to follow social norms. Prison is the only option. The Madhouse, as some people might call it. I don't know. Curious, by the way, if the numbers here, as far as like the people in the world, actually are accurate to uh, like real world populations at the time. Wouldn't surprise me. Seems like the author has done a pretty good amount of thought into the customization of this scenario. But if that's the case, it means there were less than a billion people on the planet in the 1700s, which is crazy considering how many billions there are now. Also, Greenland exterminated all birds. How extremely horrible. Anyway, what do you got against birds? Xenomiteora. Phantasm can survive amongst the stars? Giving transmission to random cosmic phenomena such as meteor strikes allows survival in the atmosphere. Sounds to me like we should never be cured if I do this. Viper preference. Yeah. Uh, we could go for total body paralysis. That's pretty lethal. Let's go ahead and pick this up. That leads to complete organ failure. Okay. I'm going to go for Xenometeora, and that leads to evolution. Phantasm has rapidly evolved traits learned from Earth's environment, gaining partial individual movement and proto-limbs, allows interplanetary access and movement. Are we creating an animal species that will spread the disease across the universe? That's what it seems like to me, and I dig it. Freaking yes. Let's go ahead and create a starborn monstrosity. I love it. Okay. So we've done that. I was expecting a pop-up. Didn't happen. Maddened symptom mutated for free. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Viper preference. Rats. Eh. I think we just focus on other things here. The escape. Partially paralyzed and insane. The phantasm allows communication with the beyonders. New untold abilities are gifted to these followers of the way. Essence leeching. So this is where it's starting to get more Lovecrafty and it's actually happening. What do you know? Psionic connections between phantasms leech dark energy between them, weakening the mental and physical forms of humanity. Are we going to transcend and become actual otherworlders? If that's the case, I may regret having as much lethality as we do. Um, we're not killing very quickly, though. It's relatively slow, despite the fact that we have pretty high lethality. Part of that is that the prion is always going to be slow, but still, let's pick this up. That leads to erupting tendrils. Gaps in the body erupt with tendrils from the beyond. Creatures from the other side attack nearby organics and absorb material for the host. Okay, a bit more lethality. Um, again, we're very slow right now, but I'm not feeling too concerned about the cure, given that it's, you know, 100% gone. It is literally impossible for them to cure me. Now it's just a question of score due to speed. And lethality is definitely speeding up because, you know, Prion taking some time to ramp up. There we go. So that's starting to happen. A couple more pe million people dying per day. And because the cure is completely gone, we are not getting any more DNA from Blue Bubbles. So at this point, I think we get nothing. And I'll take that back. We get a little bit from lethality. It's happening. Um, I would love to get the next one, but I'm not sure we're going to get it. Anything else we can do? No, I don't think so. I think that's about it. What's this? Visitor. Specific chosen of humanity are visited by a great beyonder to leave their corporeal forms. We do ascend. Fascinating. My only, my only sadness, I think, with this scenario is we're not going to get to see all the customization here. There's a lot more going on. Uh, occultism behavior. Hosts for the beyonders band together to form groups of insane war machines. War machines? Impossible to connect with them for a cure. Don't worry, there is no cure. There's nothing to connect about, okay? Well, at this point, I mean, we've won. Now it's just a matter of time. So let's just go ahead and speed forward a wee little bit. Just like so. Plega Sanctorum has successfully eliminated all life on the Earth. What a really cool idea for a scenario. And there's so much more that I could have done if I had really stuck to a specific path. Which is cool. I like that. Yeah, great idea for a scenario. And I 
excuse me, love the uh, historical basis going on here. So much customization, changing up the population and all the governments and stuff based on what was going on, changing the demographics within each respective country. Some are poor and some are rural, depending on how they were actually developed at that time. Really creative idea there. Beyond that, though, the scenario itself is just generally good. I mean, I like the Lovecraftian theme that's kind of going on there. I, I don't know how well, like, the Phantasm fits in with that. It's kind of a ghost thing until it's not. But, yeah, it's a weird otherworldly power that just sucks humanity into the beyond. It's great. Good idea for a scenario. Definitely a thumbs up from me. 798 days, 31% cure progress, 30,751 points, and one star. Absolutely. Good scenario. Well done. Absolutely has earned that four stars. No doubt about it. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.